Oof, I always start my lives off looking crazy. <laughs> I'm like, I know I'm about to go live. And I still just start off crazy every time. What up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever it is when you watch this video, just make it apply. Well, technically it's alive, but it's going to be turned into a video on uh, YouTube. Uh, here we go, here we go, trying to get this thing set up. I know y'all like, Rashad, why you just don't do it before you hit that button? Like, you, you know, you know when you're going to hit that button. Like, why we just don't do it beforehand? Get this shit together. Because, my God. I got to get readings done. Whew. We made it. Finally got this thing set up. What up, everybody? <laughs> Hopefully, everybody in good positive energy. Basking in the energy of the ancestors and the Orishas. How we doing out there? Everybody alive? Man. Let's have... A really good live reading or well technically it's not a reading but Ugh. intuition is everything oh y'all forgive me I'm, I'm painting and I got so much shit going on I'm zooming in over there I'm like I'm not even done I'm like I started I started this project early this morning and uh I had to go to Home Depot to get some more uh to get some more material. So I'm like, man, I'm just showing projects I'm not even done. <laughs> but um, this live is gonna be about, uh, I'm getting ready to prepare, um, I'm getting ready to prepare something special for Yemaya and Olakun to put on their shrine. So um, this is Sunday. Y'all, Sunday is the day that we dedicate our time to Honoring and acknowledging the ancestors and the Orishas by, by maintaining their altars. This Sunday is the day that we do all of the upkeep. I know some people like to do it based on the Orisha day. You have uh, Monday, which is Ilegwa. You have Tuesday, which is Ogun. You have Wednesday, which is Ogun. You have uh, Thursday, which is Obatala. You have Friday, which is Oya and Chango. You have Saturday, which is Yemaya and Oshun. And you have Sunday again, which is Obatala. So I know some people like to do it on their day, but I like to do it on a Sunday. You, while we're off, we can get things done. And so, you know, this is the best time for me. Listen to your intuition. Your intuition will lead you and guide you on a lot of different things and it will help you out in the long run. I was, um, I love seafood. You know, crab is my favorite food. Just want to put that out there for in case anybody want to buy me some angry crabs, holla at your boy. Go ahead and order those. Go ahead and order that angry crab and hit me up. <laughs> so I love me some angry crab. I love crab is my favorite thing. I love crab. I love shrimp and I love um, oysters and things like that. And so when I was eating, you know, uh, it was in my intuition. I could just hear Yemaya telling me, it was like, you know, save the shells. It was like, you know, save the shells and do something with the shells for my um, for my altar or for my shrine, because this is Yemaya shrine that I'm getting ready to prepare something for. And so your intuition is, is everything. Your intuition is key. You know, um, I think all too often we have learned that we're supposed to listen to that still small voice and we think every time that God speaks to us that it's going to be this little bitty message that's going to come into our ear and they're going to talk to us as if they, you know, um, as if they're, you know, human, as if we're face to face. But, um, but you know, majority of the time they will give you an inner knowingness. They will give you an inner knowingness of you just know, like I, I was sitting at the altar the other day and um, I was praying, I was bl blowing my tobacco smoke, I was doing a ritual for another client and um, I just start craving church's chicken. 
you know, and in my mind and in my head, I everything like my mouth was watering and everything that I was like, you know, oh, I want me a, you know, I want a two piece. I want a biscuit. I want some fried okra that I was just craving all of these things. And my body was just remembering what it tastes like and everything. And I remember when I got up, you know, um, from the altar, I ended up telling my son, I was like, damn, now I got to go to churches. I was like, you know, I was like, one of the Orishas want churches. And he was like, what? He was like, you know, uh, how do you know that? You know, why do you think that they want churches? And I'm like, because I don't crave churches. That's not my craving. And that's the one thing that you have to learn about your intuition. You have to be able to discern what's you and what's them. Because I'm like, this is definitely not me. Because me and churches equals heartburn. Me staying up all night, feeling like that I got to throw up because of all of that grease. And I'm like, no, this is definitely not me. This is one of the Orishas that is specifically saying, you know, for this ritual that you're doing, you know, in order for me to be blessed, in order for this ritual to be blessed, you know, this is the offering that I want. It's key that you listen to your intuition. Very key. Somebody said, what's the difference between an altar and a shrine? Number one, I'm going to tell all you guys, make sure that you go to my website. My website is in my, um, my website is in my bio. Um, so it's, it's my, um, stand store. I have, um, a couple of books for purchase. You know, my, my first book, the emerging butterfly, you can get that from, um, the, the website, www.rashadking.com. But there's two other books that I created. One of them is the Paint of Keys, telling you the stories of the Orishas so that you can start learning these things and start learning who is Orisha. What, what is their dominion? What, is their, what are they over? And the Paint of Keys are so key because you get to understand their personalities, their temperaments, their likes and their dislikes. There's a lot of things that you can get from the sacred stories, which are the Paint of Keys. And then um, my second book is a book teaching you how to pray. I remember when I first started this religion, I didn't know how to mix everything together. You know, I was like, okay, do who do I pray to first? Is it the ancestors? Is it the Orishas? How do I incorporate these other deities? How do I incorporate all of the stuff that I work with that, you know, um, I'm scratched in Palo Mayambe. I'm initiated in Ifa, uh, crowned Oya. I practice hoodoo. And it's like, how do you merge all of this together? And that's the purpose of my other book that is on my website is teaching you how to pray. And in that book, it, te it teaches you the difference between an altar and a shrine. There's a big difference between the two. You know, and um, you want to learn this information. You know, when it comes to your, let me, uh, I guess I'll, I'll show you in a few. Your, your shrine, let's just say it's a beautiful decoration that is dedicated to the ancestors or to the Orishas. Your shrine is very beautiful, it's gorgeous. It has a mixture of things that represent the deity that you're trying to honor and acknowledge. It has the real consecrated deity in their house. And so your shrine is very powerful. It's a, it's a dedication to the ancestors or to the Orishas. Your shrine is, you know, like I said, it's beautiful. You're going to have flowers and plants and all types of stuff on your shrine. You're going to have a cup of water. You're going to have a candle. But when it comes to food offerings, you're not going to put that on your shrine. Your shrine is literally just a place of decoration and uh, of decorating and making it a beautiful sacred space for the deity that you're channeling. Your altar, on the other hand, your altar is where the magic happens. That's where you do your work. Not only are you going to have your offerings, but you're also going to have your candles, your money jars, your protective jars, and everything else on your altar. Your altar is where you work. And so in each one of my shrines, you'll see the Orishas, you know, having their own section. But on the altar... I have every last one of the Orishas around on that altar so that all of them is in one place. And when I'm casting, you know, rituals and spells and things like that, you know, it's blessed and you can feel 
that energy generating from the altar. The altar is where you're going to lay your petition. The altar is where you're going to lay your offerings. The altar is where you do a lot of stuff. And that's where all the magic happens. So, like I said, I was eating uh, seafood the other day. And as I was eating seafood, you know, the intuition kicked in. And it was like, you better not throw, you know, you better not throw these shells and stuff away. Use these shells and put it on my altar. You know, so that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be obedient with what I received through my intuition. And we are going to work together to go ahead and, you know, do something special for Yemaya and Olakun. Before you can do anything for any Orisha, you must know the Orisha. You must study. You must understand what it is that they like, the ins and outs, in order for whatever you present to them as an offering, it is accepted. It's accepted as long as you stay within the guidelines and everything of what it is that they like. And so your offerings when it comes to a shrine is not always food. Normally when I want to give food as an offering, that goes on the altar. When I want to do some type of decoration, something that's going to be beautiful, something that's going to represent their essence, that is going to go on the shrine. So... Let's go and get this thing started. So we both know when it comes to Yemaya and Olakun, both of them are water deities. So whatever you want to do, keep it within that realm. So today is Sunday. So right now, like I have all of my candles getting ready to put on the altar. I have all my flowers and everything because we want to make sure that we're replacing all of this stuff. We don't. You know, um, there is an upkeep, you know, when it comes to these altars. Don't just let your altars just, you know, look any type of way. So we're going to do something with the oyster um, shells that, you know, Spirit was telling me to keep. So that we can create something beautiful for Yemaya and Ola Kun Shrine. And so... The best thing that I said, the best thing that I thought of, of using the oysters is coming up with a mini tank. You know, especially since these are water deities representing, representing the bodies of water. So I'm like, you know, it would be cute to, uh, it would be cute to do a mini, t uh, a mini tank. So I purposely picked out rocks that represent the sea. If you guys know me, you know I'm big when it comes to plants. So, you know, even when it comes to um even when it comes to a tank, you know, I still want to have plants. I love me some uh I love me some plants. And then when I'm done, I'll show you the shrine and I want to show you exactly how uh, I'm going to put it on the shrine. So I'm going to get me some my live plants. Let's see if I can bring this thing together. This is what I was thinking about in the store. My intuition just been running when it when it came to this project because I love Yemaya. You know, Yemaya is the one that led me to this religion. You know, even though I am a child of Oya, it was Yemaya that led me to this religion. So, especially when she speaks, saying that I want something, you know, beautiful on my altar, I definitely make sure that I take the time and um, be obedient and, you know, give something beautiful. You know, um, I think when it comes to... Um, the altars and stuff like that. We never want to rush and have to and have to anything. At first, I was gonna do the plants all around because uh, when I was at when I was in the store, but these things was like ten dollars a a thing. So I was like, you know what? Let me just do the back. Let me just let me just do the back. We don't need the we don't need the whole thing. <laughs> I'm like, man. Because I think it would have taken probably about like six or seven of these in order to get the whole circle. So I'm like, nah, let me, I'm like, you know, I love you, Yemaya, but uh, 
you know, that's the one thing about it. When we give offerings, we got to think about the cost. We got to think about what we can afford, what we can't afford. You know, don't don't say that, oh, I'm doing this because, you know, the Orishas wanted me to be, you know, bankrupt. They didn't. They didn't do things within do things within your means. Every time you now Yemaya is a very uh, how do wanna, I want to say it? A very it can be a very expensive deity. Your female deities, they like the best of the best, but. There are plenty of times that Yemaya have asked me to do something and I'm like, uh, and I'm like, you know what? You know, I, I can't do it. You know, I'm like, I will do it. I would always tell them I would do it if you give me the money. <laughs> and many times they have said bet and they have blessed me with the money. So we got our we got our plants in the back. We got the um, we got the gravel and everything. I got my stand in the middle. I'm going to now take all of this started because uh, in my intuition, Yemaya was telling me to keep these shells and put it on our altar. And so now I'm going to put this on top of the rocks as a decoration, giving her back what belongs to her because this is all the seat anyways. So I'm going to put that. Just like that. Mm -mm -mm. I like how it's coming out so far. Put that there. That look good. I got my little, um, I got my little treasure chest because when it comes to Yemaya and Olakun, it's treasure in the uh, in the sea. So I got that right there. Let me go ahead and push this down. All right. And so this is how it's, it's looking so far. Let me get the other one because this is going to be one for Yemaya and then the other one is going to be for Olakun. So there's a reason why I'm taking this cup holder <laughs> and putting it directly in the middle. You'll see how it looks at the end, my, my vision and my mind. So I'm going to take the rocks again. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love decorating altars. I love decorating altars. I can do it. I can do it all day, every day. <laughs> Let that be my job. People just hire me to decorate their altars and shrines. Man, I will do it with. I will do it in a heartbeat. And so, once again, I love my flowers. I love my plants. And then, especially when it comes to, you know, um, when it comes to like Yemaya and stuff like that. Like, don't don't get me wrong. I have some fake uh, plants and flowers and stuff around the house for decorations. But when it comes to the Orishas, I do like to use real. I, I like to use real because number one, you're capturing their essence. They are the essence of nature. They are the essence of the rocks, the trees, the plants, the forests. You know, they are that representation. So having that on their shrine and their altar it just it, it brings a different energy in the house. You'll 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 feel it. You you know it. All right, so that look good. My next. I love I love I love I love I love the ancestors. I love the Orishas. You know, it's, you know, I, every time, you know, I can be in the store and especially if I see something that's really good looking and gorgeous, I'm like, Ooh, oh, that's going to be good for Oshun. That's, oh my gosh, that's going to be so pretty. That's going to be so pretty on Yemaya altar. Oh my gosh, that's going to be so pretty on all your altar. And I just be, I'll be grabbing stuff. I'm like, y'all don't even have to, y'all don't even have to give me a nudge on this one. Like. 
I I want to honor and acknowledge you for everything that you have done because when I tell you these Orishas have done a lot for me. I don't know about you, but the ancestors and the Orishas, when I tell you that they have blessed me tremendously, they have blessed me tremendously. It's I don't think that I can say no with everything that they have done for me. And you show, you show what they have done for you by your gratitude. But by, by the way that the way that their altar look, it, it lets me know how much you love your Orishas. It's by, by the way that it looks, by it, and it don't have to be the most expensive stuff in the world. It's just the, the way you keep your altars, it tells a lot. Oh, man, I got spit and stuff running. I love, um, oh, yeah, that's beautiful. I like that. But this one is a little bit, I put more rocks in this one than I did the, the other one. I really should have evened them out. Put the, and I'm telling you, all of this started, um, all of this started because, I was just eating oysters and Yemaya was like, you better keep this. And so, you know, and then didn't tell me how she wanted it decorated. She just said, you know, I want it on my altar. But when you put things on the altar, you just can't, you just can't just throw it any type of way and think that it's going to be acceptable. Like, no. They tell you to put something on the altar. That don't mean just, you know, jump and just, you know, just lay it on the altar. You know, make it look good. Make it look, make it look good. These are two extra ones. I'll put that one back there. All right. So I got it. That's how I want it. That's how I want it to look. You know, I I love I love my Arishas. It's it's not nothing nobody can tell me. I I love my Arishas. You can't you can't tell me they're not real. I've had too many battles that they have had to come to bat for me. People trying to do spell work on me and everything else, and then you wonder why I haven't failed. Baby, it's it's not because of my own strength. I love that Psalms. It's not because of my own strength and my own sword and bow. It's only because of the Orishas. Igun, Spirit God, Ancestor, Sarabanda, Orisha, Yeshua, Oladumare, Olarum, and Olafi. Especially Sarabanda. Now, I love me some Sarabanda. Sarabanda is a Cuban African deity from Palo Mayambe. I love me some Sarabanda. All right, so look at look at how we looking right now. Do, 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 do. That's how we looking right now. So yep, I like it. You know, whenever we're doing something for the Orishas and stuff like that, everything need to have intentions behind it. What is the intentions? This is a water deity. These are water deities that owns the sea, that owns the ocean. All right. Let me get my water. This fish is gonna have way more room because I didn't put all these rocks. I should have. Yeah, 
Hit this thing with some water conditioner. This is good for the coat. I'm gonna take my betta fish. I got me a blue betta fish because once again, I'm just, I'm maximizing on their color. There we go. Look at that fish. There you go, you better swim, baby. Swim for Yamaya. Swim for Olakun. And then I'm gonna take my other betta fish and put it in the second one. There we go. Beautiful. And so, let me show you how it's gonna look on the altar, and then I'm gonna show you it on the altar. So, and then I'm gonna have Yamaya just sitting up there. Mother of the Sea and Olakun. And so that's exactly how it's going to look as I put it on the shrine. And so, and all of this is because Yemaya, it just told me as I was uh, as I was eating my oyster, she was like, You better not, you better not throw this away. You better keep it. So I'm gonna place it on the shrine. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like. So I, I love, I love taking care of my altars and shrine. And then just look at the fish. Look, look at the fish. The fish is, the fish so happy. Let me turn this thing around. Look at the fish. That fish in there like, where am I at? Where am I at? Yeah, my eyes, the fish right there. So, I'm going to, and so these are ways, these are like simple ways that we can honor and acknowledge the ancestors. Let me put it on the altar and I'm going to show it to you. So see, and then one, it one hard at all, easy and simple. All right, let me grab Yemaya and put this on the shrine, and then I can show you the shrine. Right? You gotta be careful with that water boy trying not to spill it. <laughs> All right, and so this is how I honor and acknowledge my Orishas. So this is a shrine. Your shrine is just going to have like your waters, your candles, and it's a decorated space 
for the Orishas, your altars is going to be normally on the floor because, you know, I know people are like, what? Offerings go on the floor? Yeah, offerings go on the floor. You know, so your, your, offer, your, your altar is normally like floor based. So, so this is my shrine. And it's for Yemaya, Obatala, Oba, and Olakun. All of them are on here. And so it is a representation of all of their colors. So um, I have my plants. And so now this is what I just created for Olakun. And so Olakun have his space because he's a water deity. So it's like he's in the water. We have Oba. We have Obatala. And then the same thing with Yemaya. This is what I just created where it's like she's in that water. And so this is how you give reverence. This is how you, you know, honor and acknowledge the Orishas. You know, like I said, it's a mixture of, you know, fake and real. You know, with Obatala, he has the fake white flowers. But with the other Orishas, it's real plants all around. You know, they are the representation of nature. You know, but as you are, you know, doing your shrines and stuff like that, remember what you put on there, it must be an upkeep. So... Your shrines is that space. Your um your your shrine is that space where it's a dedication to the Orisha. It's a dedication to the Orisha, but your altar, your altar is four based. Your altar is where you do your work. That's where you have your candles. This is where you blow your tobacco smoke. This is where manifestation happens. This is where curses are removed and broken. This is where you send energy back to sender that tried to send some shit to you. Your altar is very powerful. And this is where you're going to do your workings. This is where you're going to do your prayers and everything else on your altar. Food and everything will be on the floor. Your alcohol, all of that stuff will be on the floor. This is where I have my protective jars protecting everything in my life and the whole nine yards. So this is where your altar, your altar is always based on the floor. Your shrines is what actually holds the Orishas. And it's a dedication to them. So just like my girl Loshun, look at her over there looking all beautiful and stuff. That's a shrine. So you know the biggest shrine in the house is to Oya because Oya is my head Orisha. And so Oya, of course, I had to go all out because nobody can't be better than Mama. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody, nobody can't be better than your head, Arisha. No, we got to We got to go and get that out the way. And so, you know, Oya Shrine is is the biggest in the house. I think that that's how it should be when it comes to your head, Arisha. When it comes to your head, Arisha, they should have a dedicated space. So with every Arisha in the house if you notice all their shrines, like this is the shrine for the warriors, for Ilegwa, Eshu, Ogun, Ochosi, you know, but when it comes to your head, Orisha, if everybody else is getting a table, give your head, Orisha, a whole fucking room. You know, your head, Orisha is one of the most important Orishas, and you want to make sure that you dedicate that space, you know, to really honor and acknowledge them and to acknowledge the fact that this is your head. So all of these are, are shrines. Your shrines are going to be all over. Your shrines are going to be all over. And it's, it's the same thing, even with your house. Remember, you know, when it comes to your house and stuff like that, too, you can't have your house nasty, you know, especially when you have deities here, you know, so you, you can't have it. You can't have it nasty. You got to make sure that your space is you got to make sure that your space is upkept as much as possible. But, you know, these are your shrines, you know, but. 
Like I said, this is your altar. This is where I dare somebody to do some shit to me because I'm going to send that shit back to you. <laughs> so um, I know uh, people are always asking me, let me, uh, people are always asking me, am I doing some type of mentorship and stuff like that? You know, my, my form of mentorship is my books. You know, I, I write and I put everything in my books. You know, there are books on my website that you can go to my bio and you can um, click on the website. Is that I put everything in my books, teaching you the basics, you know, teaching you, you know, uh, Elijah, yes, sir. go ahead and start putting the candles on the altars. Make sure each one get their right color candle. Yes, sir. So, uh, and start with Elegua. So grab the red candle. Start with Elegua on this shoe. You know they are first. Yes, sir. You know, I, I like to do all of this on Sunday to get it out the way. You know, I'm like, I don't have to be reminded now to, um... You know, I don't have to worry about, oh, I forgot, you know, this Arisha day and, you know, all of this other stuff. Nope. I just do it on Sunday. It, that's the best practice I think that I have is Sunday is that holy day that is change the flowers out, change the waters, you know, uh, do a spiritual floor wash, do incense to cleanse your home, rid your house of any negative energy. And so now I'm just going around doing the uh, the altars, easy and simple. So when I say like, "Hey, it's Sunday, get your house clean, get your house cleansed," this is what I meant. <laughs> this is what I mean. Let's go start getting this stuff done, and you know just. Man, just thanking the ancestors and the Orishas. Um, Elijah, come here for a minute. Because yes, um, do this for me. Uh, hold this uh, camera for me. So I, can, so I can just try to show you guys and walk you through it to let you know that it don't take long. Let me, uh, all right, here. All right, let me show you that it don't take long. Oh no, Elijah, I wanted um, white on um, Oya's um, this time. Okay. Only using the candles that. So right now it's just setting everything up because we definitely, you know, we already know before the Arishas, the ancestors must go first. So I can lay the candle on here, but I cannot, um, I can lay the candle on here, but I'm not going to light it until I light the ancestors first. And then once I light the ancestors, you got to light the Legwa candle first. So Elijah did somewhat good. Green for Elegua, I mean green, red for Elegua, red for a shoe, green for Ogun, but no, I don't know why Elijah got this green over here, because Ochosi is not green, Ochosi is blue. So we're going to get another blue, we're going to put the blue candle for Ochosi. Now, blue for Ochosi. Okay, so when it comes to Oya, Oya got purple. When it comes to the ancestor altar, let me get a white candle.
so white for the ancestors. So we're gonna lay that there. All right, so we got the front. They need their flowers. The um, they get their flowers cut. So the main thing, guys, I I just want to show you that it don't take long to do things on the altar. You know, I know some people it, it, like overthink this where it's just like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, what do I give them? You know, what do I, how do it supposed to look? The only thing with your altar is that, is that your altar should have every element. You know, well, mainly your ancestor altar. Your ancestor altar should have every element. It should have earth. It should have fire. It should have wind. It should have water. What is earth? Earth is your plant. Earth is your flowers. Earth is your crystals. Fire. Fire is your candles. Wind. Wind is your incense. Wind is your oil diffuser. Wind is your prayers. Wind is the perfume and the cologne that you spray on the altar. And then finally, water. Water is your cups of water that you have on the altar. You want to make sure that you have every element on the altar. But when it comes to the Orishas, you want to make sure it's specific to their dominion, to what it is that they like. You know, Chango is a god of fire, so I wouldn't put a water, um, a water tank on his altar. That's not his element. His element is fire. All right, so we got our flowers now for the ancestor altar. Let's keep going in the living room now. All right, so now I need one for Oshun, which is gonna be yellow. I need one for Chango. Oshun. Chango. All right, I need one for Arumula. Arumula can be yellow or Arumula can be green. Yeshua. Yeshua, we're gonna put yellow. And then Odudua. We're gonna put white. So now we got every we got every candle in place. We have all of the flowers and everything in place. Let me get my lighter. And so now let's go and light these things. Ancestors, be with me in this moment. Watch over me and keep me safe. I thank you for everything that you have done. Ashe. Right after the ancestors, how oh, you got a red and a, um, a red and a yellow? Um, oh, cause you was taken out of the um, the closet. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Ilagua. Keep doors open for me. Thank you, Ashu. Protect me from all my enemies. Ashe. Thank you, Ogun. Continue to be a strong protector and clear my way. Thank you, Ochosi. Keep everything fair and balanced. Thank you, Mama Oya. Continue to allow blessings to come in. So I, I just always treat my hair to reach a different. Where everybody else got one candle, Oya got two.
assume that you bless me with love and abundance. Thank you, Chango. May you protect me, guide me, strengthen me, and encourage me. Keep me on my path. Thank you, Olakum. May you bless me with your riches. Thank you, Oba. May you allow me to be steadfast in my belief, being dedicated and loyal just like you, Ashe. Thank you, Obatala. May you give me peace in my mind. Thank you, Yemaya. May you bless me with your nurturing energy and powers. Thank you, Arum Yilam, may you continue to watch over me and warn me before destruction. Thank you, Yeshua, may you bring peace and love into my life. Thank you, Odudua, may you heal my body, my soul, my mind, my spirit as well as my heart. And these are just candles, the extra candles I had for my... These are just, these are just spaces for Igum because I work with a lot of, I work with a lot of spirits. I work with a lot of, so Igum is just the encompassing of all of the dead. And so, this is for the male lagoon, egoon, and then the other side is just the females. And then this one is just to bless the house. And this one just goes right by my decoration in the kitchen. And so now with my two extra candles, just putting it back in storage. I think that everybody should have a storage space. All my candles is in here because you never know when I'm doing work for somebody. You know, I do a lot of spell work for people. So I got all my candles based on their colors, all of the herbs and everything, all of the oils and everything that I need for my candles is just right here in one spot. So I'm always ready. <laughs> all right. Yo, know, why wearing black on Sunday? Because it was the it was the easiest thing to grab because I needed to go to the store before I changed my mind. <laughs> I don't be liking the I don't um I don't um I don't like going places. You know, majority of the time I just wanna I just wanna sit. And it's a lot of things that, you know, spirit has been um, inspiring me to do and sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming and so normally you know I just grab what I you grab anything and just go um, wh what do you mean um, altars in public spaces like you have other people stand with you and so you you have your altars I think that that's fine as long as everyone in the house have a respect for the altar as long as no one is messing with the altars, I believe that's fine. My doors are closed. How do I open them? By doing a ritual. You can go to my website. There's um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of different rituals that I provide for um, people. That I will just have the candle and stuff burning um, at my altar, blowing tobacco smoke and stuff on it. That stuff will open your doors just like that. You know, majority of the majority of the time, if doors are closed, you could be having somebody that is doing somebody doing spell work against you to close that door. So, but there's a there's a big difference between an altar and a shrine. 
Uh, you work with angels too. I mean, I call them the angels, but for the most part, I work with the Orishas. You know, um, the Orishas are powerful deities. Um, no, you can have all of the um, altars in the same space. Just be careful on which ones you allow to touch each other. You know, like, you know, with my altar over here, it's Yemaya, Obatala, Oba, and Olakun. These are all Orishas that get along with each other, but I wouldn't have Ogun and Chango on the same altar or Yemaya and Oya on the same altar. That is the purpose of reading the painted keys and things like that and understanding who who's best to put around the Orisha? Who who is it that the Orisha don't fuck with? What are their taboos? What are their likes? What are their dislikes? That's the whole purpose of these books that's on my website. Then yeah, if somebody is doing spell work against you, you need to go in and you need to go in and rip that up. You need to go and rip that, you know, I do spells 24-7, you know, helping my clients out to remove negative witchcraft. Yeah, you need to uh, go to my website, go to my page and look at all the services that I provide. Um, you, can send me a, um, you can send me a message on Instagram as well. But yeah, um, I, I love doing rituals. I, can do, I do rituals all day, all day, every day. But yeah, uh, but at least um, the one thing that I can give you is that at least you're in the mindset of getting rid of that negative energy. You'll be surprised how many people that know that they are under heavy witchcraft and they will not do a thing to remove that witchcraft. They will just keep noticing that all these doors are closed and not do anything and they wait to the very last minute that they have lost everything and then they say, oh, I want to get this Rick, I want to get this witchcraft off of me. Uh, uh, spell work. I mean, prayers, prayers are good. You know, even when I'm doing workings, I'm doing prayers, but there are some things that's beyond prayer. Once somebody is doing witchcraft and stuff of, um, on you, you got to rid yourself of that magic. You got to rid yourself of that energy. If you feel that you're in a loop and you're mentally tired and drained, once again, that's a sign that somebody is doing spell work. And so there's a, there's a lot of things you can do. There's You can give offering to Ori to wake Ori up and tell Ori like, hey, I need you moving. Ori is the soul within you, which is the true essence of who you are. And if you don't know the rituals for Ori, then it's just doing basic magic in order to rid yourself of that witchcraft. Once again, you can go on my website and you can look at the rituals that I, uh, the services that I provide so that it can, you know, get you in a better state of mind. Yes, spiritual bath is um, is spell work because it's spiritual bath is water with intentions that you are adding the right herbs, the right spices and everything to that water in order to bring about that manifestation. But spiritual baths is nothing if you have work being done on you because you first must rid yourself of the curse of the spell and then once you have rid yourself of the spell, that's when you can do manifestation work. Um, you said what I do a, um, what you suggest is self um, love. Self love is really good. You know, self love will um, heal from you know childhood issues and all of that stuff. Uh, I've been so tired. My kids have been going crazy and they don't act like that. Oh yeah, that's a spell then. That's definitely a spell. That's definitely somebody projecting magic to you. How often should you take a salt bath? You should be taking a spiritual bath at least once a week. Um, altar, your altar is, um, altar and shrines are two completely different things. Your altar is on the floor. Um, there's a lot of different rituals that you can do. I mean, I, all of my stuff that I do is based in Hoodoo, Palo Mayambe, and Ifa. And so um, I do rituals for clients that, you know, um, I, whether it's, you know, a voodoo doll, 
whether it's a candle, whether it's mirror work, whether it's tobacco smoke, there's a lot of th different things that you can do. But when it comes to curses, it's not a, a one, um, a one size fit all. You know, the first thing that I do is I perform divination that I can get a sense of what it is, that I can know exactly what it is that somebody is doing against you. Did they put you in a sweet jar? Are you in somebody's freezer? Did they do a voodoo doll? You know, I need to, there's certain information that I need. There's certain information that I need, and then that's when I'll tell my clients, hey, this is what I recommend. Based on what I've seen in the cards, this is what I recommend for you to do, which is going to be your next steps. But yeah, you want to, you, you got to get that information first. I got to see what's actually in your energy. Um, yeah, it's, it's fine. You know, my ancestor altar is on the table because the ancestor altar should technically be on the table. But um, the only altar that is on the floor is the altar that you do work because the whole purpose of an altar, it must be grounded. You ground from the floor. The floor is where you ground. I mean, it's man, I can tell you so much shit you could do with your altar that will make that thing so powerful and people will never do witchcraft on you. <laughs> But, you know, uh, all of the information is in my book. All of the information is in my books of how to create, you know, um, a spiritual sacred place for yourself. But um, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do to bring about, you know, powerful manifestation. Um, yeah, I mean, all of the information is available in my book. Y'all, I put everything in my book, you know, um, but your floor is, is, is grounding. Like some of the things that you can do is use dirt. You know, depending on what it is that you're trying to manifest, you're trying to manifest money, get dirt from a bank. You're trying to um, manifest healing, get dirt from a hospital. You're trying to. And, and that's why a majority of our um, a majority of our teachings, we already have dirt from selective places. We have dirt from a church, hospital, banks, grocery store from the rivers, from the ponds, from the lakes. So you already have those elements at your altar. So when it's time to use those things right, from the cemetery, from the hills, from the mountains, you know, so that when you when it's time for you to use that, you already have everything that you need in order to ground and um and bless you. Um so the books that you're looking for is going to be the books that's in my um uh, on my website. So it's not going to be the RashadKing.com. It's going to be the Stand Store. It's going to be the Rashad King 2017. All you got to do is go to my bio, and once you click on that link, it'll take you to my website that you can book a divination session. You can book any type of spiritual service that you want me to do, as well as you can purchase my books. The books are ebooks, so the moment you purchase, it will just go directly to your email. So, yep, yeah, I have two. One of them is teaching you about how to pray. Um, I think that book is very important because when I first got into the religion, I was lost. And there is an order to things. The orders is very simple. The ancestors come before the Orishas. Elegua become, goes before any other Orisha. And so it walks you through the prayers of how you're supposed to pray to the deities. You know, um, it had them in their specific order. And then it's giving you examples of prayers that, you know, at the end of the book, it has just a rundown of all of the prayers that I was saying on my uh, seven day prayer, as well as um, additional prayers that you can recite every morning with the right candles, with the right herbs, with the right spices. And it will bring about powerful manifestation and change in your life. And so we, we definitely, we got to, we got to take the time and learn this stuff. You know, a, a lot of us, we just want this information, but we don't want to do what we have to do in order to get that information. You know, we got to be willing to put in the work. 
Uh, you said, what if the Orisha don't want to work with you? Then you fucked. <laughs> nah, I'm playing. Like, y'all, come on. The Orishas is the Orishas is not like that. If you are going with good intentions, then they are going to work with you. You're, they're definitely going to work with you if you're coming in with good intentions. You know, if you're coming in on some sneaky stuff, trying to do dark magic and trying to trap somebody, remember, they have the option to say no. So if if Elekwa said it is not time yet, it's not time yet. And you know, my thing is, especially when he said it's not time yet, I would have asked him specifically why. Because maybe he is saying that instead of for you to connect with him, that you need to be learning about your ancestors. Because the ancestors come before the Orishas. And he could just be simply telling you it's not time yet. And it's because of the way that you approached him, that you approached him not knowing him. Remember, Ilegwa is the great teacher. Ilegwa is the one that always want you to learn a lesson. And so if you're coming to Ilegwa, you need to come correct. Do the time and study. Study. Learn him. Learn him inside and out. And then it'll be easier for him to open the door. You must study to show thyself approved. If you're if you're just coming into this halfway and just thinking that everything is going to be cool, fine and dandy, then no, they'll teach you like they'll teach you a lesson. Trust me, they'll teach you that you need to come correct. It's like the Cain and Abel effect. Abel gave, you know, pleasing offerings that clearly he knew the God that he was serving. Cain didn't. Cain did a Cain did a, 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 a halfway. You know, that he he gave what he wanted instead of what was supposed to be given. And so, yes, you know, um, the ancestors goes before the Orisha. So if you're coming to Ilegwa and he's saying, not, um, no, not yet, then I would have took that time to learn about the ancestors. That I would have learned who my, you know, connecting with my ancestors and then from there going back to Ilegwa so that he can open the door. But it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful when you get into it and you start doing it. You know, it's, it's very beautiful. You know, um... I, like I, I love, I love my life. I love working with the Orishas. I love working with the ancestors. But I think that I got so much respect from the ancestors and from the Orishas when I started my path is because I took the time to study. I read every book out there on the Orishas, on the ancestors. Like when when I go into something, I don't do it halfway. If I don't do it, I don't do the shortcuts and stuff like that. If you're going to do that, there's no point of starting it at all. And so, you know, um, definitely connect. You know, um, man, they have got me out of so many jams. You know, it, it seemed like every time a bad, some bad happened in my life, they used it as an opportunity to ascend me and to get me to the next level. But I just I just wanted to show you guys like I just you know, like I I love I look forward to Sundays, you know, Sundays I can just, you know, I can just sit back and just, you know, my intuition just be like, oh, do this, do that. You know, like my mind, you know, my intuition was telling me to change up the house. Now I'm I'm repainting the house, adding more color to the house based on what it is that the spirits is telling me that they want. You know, I'm like, I'm good as long as it match. <laughs> don't be giving, don't be giving me no off the wall color because I will say no. I'll be, that's when I'll be saying the same thing you Lego I said. Not, not today. <laughs> Door closed. <laughs> like, don't be giving me no off the wall colors because like, I'm going to be like, nah, but spirituality, it takes work, y'all. Because, you know, at the end of the day is, as the more you get into it, 
this house is just not my house only. This is now their house too. Like I even told myself the entire downstairs is nothing but a temple to the ancestors and the Orishas. I don't even like watch TV and stuff down um, downstairs anymore because we have a living room downstairs and we have one upstairs. It's actually technically three living rooms in this house. And so downstairs is, it's, it's like, no, y'all have the downstairs. I'll come down here and cook because the kitchen and stuff is down here. But when I'm down here, we're praying, we're meditating, we're feeling the energies from the altars. That we are, you know, we are doing what we need to do in order to connect with these energies, you know. And so downstairs is dedicated to them, you know, and upstairs is where we watch TV, we play around, we have our fun. Even all of the rooms are upstairs. There's only one room down here, and that's the guest room. And so everything downstairs is dedicated to the ancestors and the Orishas. Everything, everything in this house was by design. Nothing is by chance. From the colors on the wall, from the colors to the door, everything is purpose driven. Everything is intentions. Everything is, is fueling a specific purpose. That's how it's supposed to be in your home. You know, and especially with some of these deities like, you know, the females. <laughs> Oshun. Oya, Yemaya, like I'm not saying it in a bad way, but they're bougie as hell. Like these are these are queens, these are goddesses. They want to be in certain spaces, and so my thing is that it's it's like even if you don't have the money to just completely remodel your house and stuff like that, that's what they're not ask, they're not asking you to do that. But what they are asking you is, you know, can you clean this nasty ass house? You know, if you're calling my spirit and my energy to be in here with you, can you clean this house? Can you remove the smells? Can you organize things? You know, if, if you see that your walls is just beat up and, and stuff like that, can you grab some paint and paint? You know, and it's, it's not, it, it's, it's all about honoring them. Honoring them goes beyond, it's, it's beyond just putting things on their altars and shrine. Honoring them is an attitude. It's the way you carry yourself. That you know because you have these energies in your home, there are certain things you will not do in your home now to honor them. There are certain people that you won't bring in your home to honor them. And so honoring is more than just putting stuff on their altar. It's an attitude. It's reflected and manifested in everything that you do and everything that you say and all of your intentions. Oh yeah, I, I do a lot of water work. But you know, lately more than anything, um, I've been doing the fire element more than anything. I, I love, I love fire. Fire is, um, I've been, got my little cauldron. i um, been doing a lot of fire, a lot of fire rituals. Uh, fire, fire is really good for consuming, especially when you're dealing with people that have been, uh, that is being subject to witchcraft. Fire is really good for burning that shit up. Fire will break that chain and everything else and free them in so many different ways. And so fire is the thing that I've been using more than anything. But I will use some water. But um, but I, lately it's just been fire. I love me some good fire. And wind. Wind is something that, I mean, wind, you use wind all the time because wind is everything. Wind is your tobacco smoke, your incense, your prayers, feathers. But I just, I, you know, I just wanted to make sure that y'all are, I just wanted to make sure that y'all are, you know, um, taking this time to, to honor the ancestors and the Orishas. Like, don't let this shit just pass by. Like, give them the love and everything that they need. And, you know, I'm keep telling you guys, I have material available on my website. 
Don't just keep saying, oh, I'm going to learn about the Orishas. Oh, I want to know about the Orishas, but then not putting any action towards it. Learn what you need to learn. You know, a, a lot of people ask me like, hey, do you do mentorship? Right now, my form of mentorship is creating books and putting it out there for you to purchase so that you can learn about this stuff. You know, um, I got my book with the prayers teaching you the importance of herbs, oils, spices. It runs you through everything concerning prayers, how to pick your candle out, how to pick the herbs, the spices, everything that you need for your candle work. So now as you're reciting your prayers, you have your candle with it. You know, all of that stuff is important. And then the other book is the Painted Keys that you're learning their sacred stories. There can be a lot of things when Ilegua comes to your dreams. It really depends on what your dream was all about. Ilegua is the, Ilegua, it, you know, that is, it is such a, when you say Ilegua, it's such an in general statement because Ilegua is different from every other deity because he can intercede for any other deity. So even though Ilegua was present, he could be carrying a message for Oshun. He could be carrying a message for Yemaya. And he can, he can intercede on any of their behalf. So when it comes to, you know, like Oshun, you can say, oh, maybe it's a matter of love because that's her dominion. You know, when it comes to Chango, you can say, oh, maybe it has something to do with justice. But when it comes to Ilegua, it's like, oh, it can be a number of things. You know, Ilegua is the messenger. He can be carrying a message for anybody. I mean, it's it's really nothing to say about the um the um the the, the Haitians uh, um Loas because at the end of the day, they they are the Orishas. They they call them the exact same name. Ilegua, Ogun, Ochosi, Yemaya, Chango. They call them the exact same names. They have the exact same dominion. The only difference is, is we call them Orishas and they call them Loas, but it's the same dominion, same color, same everything. And so there's not a big difference between the Loas and the Orishas. They're the exact same deity. They're just attached to two completely different practices. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. I'm a child of Oya as well. Oya is Oya is a very powerful deity. So, so that's that's it. Should we got um I got the the candle work, you know, um done. I got the altars and stuff put together and I just wanted to let y'all see how easy it is to do this on a Sunday. Like it don't take much time or anything. Now I got to get through painting, you know, like I said, you know, um the energies just have been, they have been giving me so many downloads, you know, things that I need to do different for the house. And I'm just like trying to keep up with everything. Can anyone honor the Orishas or is it only um, those of the African? No, anyone can honor and acknowledge the Orishas. Anyone can honor and acknowledge the Orishas. It's just when you honor and acknowledge them, just make sure that you come correct. And the best way that you can come correct is by understanding who they are. Study them. Study to show thyself approved. You know, that's the one that's one of the best things that you can do is that when you take the time and learn them and you mess up, they're more forgiving and they're, it, it's more understandable. But when you jump in and you do no studying at all and you fuck up, you'll see a completely different side of them because you never took the time to study. You never did anything to actually learn who they are. There's just a big difference between the two. Someone who studied and that just genuinely made a mistake and someone who rushed into this without learning anything. We need to study. And so, you know, like I said, you know, um, my books are available on my website. If you guys, um, if you... If, you, if all those that feel like they're under witchcraft, book a session. Go to my website and book a session. 
you know, book a one on one session that I can actually see what's going on. And then I will give you my recommendation on what it is that you need to do. You know, I'm not the type of person that I'm here to rob you. You know, there have been plenty of times that I have did sessions with people and they swear up and down they're under a curse. But the reading is saying that they're not under a curse at all. You know, the reading is just like, you're not under a curse. You got out of God will wanting to do your own fucking thing. And now God is saying that you're just in a position right now that you're not protected because you're not listening. And so everything is not, you know, um, you know, my, my clients will tell you, um, I'm not going to tell you that you need a ritual if you don't need it. If you don't need a ritual, if the only thing you need is a slap upside your head. I will give you a verbal slap. Boom. Do better. But if you need a ritual, then I will perform that ritual. But if not, sometimes you'll be surprised what it is that we need, uh, what it is that we actually need. How much are your readings? My readings are $80. And so all you got to do is just go to my bio, click on my, um, uh, click on the links. And it'll show you my stand store. Once you click on the stand store, you'll see where you can purchase um, a reading. You'll see where you can purchase the books as well as other services. Um, is this Santeria? Um, somewhat. You know, um, Ifa is Santeria. Ifa is the actual religion. Santeria is when they took Ifa and Christianity and they merged the two together because that was the only way that we were able to survive slavery is that externally we said Jesus, but internally we said Obatala. Externally we said St. Um, Peter, but internally we meant Ogun. And so with Santeria, it just took every last one of the Orishas and associated them with a saint. I practice Ifa Lakumi. Um, so um, that's what I practice. I practice uh, Palo Mayambe. I'm scratched, connected to Sarabanda. Um, and I practice Hoodoo. It's a mixture of, of, of practices that, um, that I practice. And I, I love them all. All of them are very powerful. I don't think you shouldn't be afraid. You know, if this is the path that you're supposed to take, go in full throttle. You know, it's, you know, it's all about, you know, the one thing that I've learned is the more that we learn, the less afraid that we are. I, it was so easy for me to get crowned and everything else because before I got to that point, I knew who the Orishas was. I didn't need my Baba Lao to teach me anything. I already took the time to read my books and everything, and I got all of this information under my belt, and that was the thing that drove me to go ahead and get crowned. And so, you know, you you know, the best thing that you can do is learn, 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 learn. You know, um, and, and I think that's the thing that we hate. We want everything just given to us. And it's like, no, you got to do, you got to do the research. You got to do, you got to do the time. Like, you know, even when I craft my books, you know, at least when I did my books, I don't have to, I don't have any BS chapters. You know, sometimes when you read a book, they have a lot of BS chapters just to make the book longer. I used to hate that when I was studying. I'm like, why is this here? <laughs> And so with my books, it's only the information that you need. I don't add all of those extra chapters just for the book to be longer. It's like, no, it's giving you that direct information that you need. And the more and more you know, the more you're going to grow. Nice. Oh, that's a good combination, especially when the whole family is into spirituality. Oh, nice. That's what's up. Oh, yeah. Eshu is a powerful deity. Eshu is a really powerful deity. But, yeah, I'm like, y'all, we all, we all got to do the work. As long as we do the work, you know, you'll see the change. You'll see the change in your life. But, 
And it's not hard. Like, take your man, taking this time. Like, you, you would think having all these altars and shrines and stuff in the house that things are going to be... Like, come on, y'all. It didn't even take long. It, it didn't even take long. We got... We got all that done and accomplished. It didn't take long. Oh, remember I'm doing a paint job, y'all. I'm not done yet. So it, it don't take long. I mean, it's so many things that I have dedicated, you know, to the ancestors, to the Orishas. You know, this this stuff is not the stuff is it it's not complicated. You know, we make it there go Elijah. Cute as always. No, this is a complete distraction from our message. No, that was just the that was just a complete distraction from our message. Like we we talking about spiritual stuff and he trying to look cute just to get somebody attention. Like complete complete distraction from our message. That's Elijah for you. I would I would, I'm not going to be surprised. If when we find out that Elijah is a is a child of Oshun, like I I really do believe that Elijah is a uh, I really do believe that Elijah is a child of Oshun, or it's probably going to end up being Ogun. It's one or the other. But I the more and more he act, <laughs> I'm like, this is a son of Oshun, Oshun. <laughs> This is a son of Oshun. I'm like, man, the way he be acting, I'm like, oh, this is Oshun. I see it. The straight Oshun. Uh-oh, don't tell Elijah that. That's going to that's gonna get in his head. <laughs> Elijah, uh, somebody said you handsome. Elijah, handsome? Ha handsome? Um, y'all didn't see. Let me let me show you these arms too. Let me handsome. That's Elijah. <laughs> That's Elijah, boy. Elijah gonna go crazy. He said, "Now y'all just said I'm handsome. What about am I cute too? Am I am I sexy too? Am I all the above?" Y'all finna oh y'all finna have Elijah acting a damn fool in this house. <laughs> Soon as I get done with this live, by the way. They said that I was handsome, not you, nigga. <laughs> oh, man. Elijah can be a lot, man. <laughs> Elijah can be a lot. He got it from Oshun. He didn't get it from me. He got it from Oshun. Because <laughs> I'm like, the more and more I be hearing that boy talk, I'm like, I'm like, Oshun, <laughs> are you here? <laughs> Are you present? Are you in this little light skin boy? Is this the true reincarnation of who you are? Oh man. I love me some beautiful Oshun though. I love me some Oshun. <laughs> but yeah, Elijah, Elijah definitely, he said, thanks for noticing me, honey. He said, thanks. Love back to you. <laughs> oh man all right y'all well i gotta go so we can eat you know i told elijah we can eat after this so um i'm about to take some time to eat and then i gotta get back to this painting so i got some stuff to do anyways uh let me see i don't know what's with you Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. So you you said you don't go to the gym. What you work out at the house? I I had a friend that uh he would just work out at the house doing like push ups, sit ups, jumping jacks, you know, and a lot of stuff. And he was shit. He was strong as hell, you know, uh, because it's not really is it's 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 all about just any type of exercise. As long as you're exercising and you're being consistent with it, you're gonna end up getting strength. You know, and um, especially if you're doing aerobic exercises that you're using your own body weight as the um, muscles is going to develop as you're using your own body weight as the weight, you know, it's going to develop muscles. So, yeah, push ups, jumping jacks, you know, all types of stuff is really good for you. Those aerobic exercises. 
Um, how far can you run? Oh boy, you don't want to get me on running. You you'll end up losing. Don't you'll be surprised. Learn the history. Learn the history about me first. <laughs> learn that history. Uh, let me. You gotta learn that history about me. That's what I've been telling people about the Rishas. But um, but no. So um, so uh, growing up, I did cross country and track. Like baby, you can look me up in Little Rock, Arkansas. Like man. I, I made it to the news. I ended up getting full pay scholarships for uh, track and cross country. Like um, I used to make it to the other school's newspapers, their school newspaper, because when I was there, I end up breaking their record. You know, I end up having one of the highest speeds. And so, um, of course, with cross country, you know, you're doing, you know, um, three to five miles It's you know, so you're doing the 5K. But when it comes to track, I used to do the mile, the two mile, the 400, and the 800. So, baby, your your brother know what he's doing on the field. You know, don't don't let don't let this you know six feet, 265 pounds fool you. I still know how to get on that track. <laughs> you know, that's where that's where I started. I love I love running. I love cardio. <laughs> So yep, I I love me some uh I love me some cardio. But um but yeah man, I made it I made it far when it came to track and cross country. You know, if it won for if it won for my childhood issues and trauma, I probably would have end up staying on the track of trying to go to the Olympics. Because um when I graduated, even though I had full pay scholarships for track and cross country, I was going through so much stuff that I wanted to get far away from Little Rock, Arkansas as possible. And so the military guys came to me and they were like, we can put you in Yakuska, Japan. So where do I sign? <laughs> and so um, I, I was stationed in Yakuska, Japan. I went to Japan um, in, the, in the U.S. Navy instead of going to college. But uh, eventually, once I got into the Navy, I ran for the Navy as well. Me and my twin brother, and um, and then that's when I went to school. I went to school when I made it to the military as well. Because your brother is educated, you know. I have two masters. I have my masters in human resource management, and I have my MBA. So I did, you know, take advantage of school. It just wasn't um, in the beginning. I just didn't. I just didn't accept those scholarships because I wanted to get far away as possible. And I'm glad I did, because um, I didn't know at the time, but. Um, I didn't know at the time, but, you know, Japan was the start of my healing. You know, uh, Japan was the start of my healing. You know, um, that's when I was introduced to Ifa. I was introduced to all these Nigerians. I never knew. I never knew anything outside of white, black, and Mexican. That's all you're going to see in Little Rock, Arkansas. White, black, and Mexican. That's it. When I went into the Navy and I was on that boat, I mean, all these different Africans, all these different races, and, you know, it was just, I mean, the diversity was on point. You know, things I'd never seen before. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. And so definitely, um, definitely opened my eyes to a lot. And it was the, it was the start of my healing. You know, when I was in, uh, when I was in high school, I was a I was a little promiscuous little whore. I was going through so much shit. I was going through so much trauma, and um, I wasn't a drinker. I wasn't a smoker, but boy, I I showed sure know how to I knew how to use this dick, <laughs> and I used it in the most unhealthy way. <laughs> that was my that was my vice, like you know, and it it got to the point it was bad. It was bad, y'all. Like I end up, I end up fucking everything, everything. I remember um, it was it was my high school year that in you know, my senior year that made me slow down and starting to rethink things. You know, um, I started feeling a sense of embarrassment when you know, like friends would take me out to places, and you know, we would get there, and then I noticed that. I done had sex with almost everybody in this place. You know, it's like, damn, I done, I, I fucked that person, I fucked that person. You know, it was like, I was like, shit. That was the thing that opened my eyes. And I was like, I think I got a problem. 
<laughs> like, no, it wasn't the, it, it wasn't all the other shit that I was doing, you know, no, I done did, at this time, I done did threesomes and everything else, but it was, once I walked in the place, and I literally almost slept with every person in that building, that was the thing that made me slow down, I was like, God, you lying, <laughs> like, no, I know I had a high body count, but I didn't know it was this. And so it slowed me down. You know, um, uh, eventually I ended up going into the military. I went a whole two years, no sex, no jacking off, no nothing. You know, I completely gave it up where I was just like, you know, um, when I left, I was like, you know, I never want to be in a, I never want to be in a city that I'm recreating this. That, you know, I walk into a place and I done slept with almost damn near everybody. I never wanted to feel like that again. And, you know, I made sure in my adulthood that I didn't. And, you know, the easiest part was taking the time to heal. You know, I think majority of the time when we look at situations like that, we'll attack the promiscuous spirit. And we'll say, you know, oh, you need to be more disciplined in this, this and that. But it has nothing to do with sex. You know, my problems came from childhood trauma and issues that I wasn't dealing with, that I was very unhealed and toxic. And the moment that I dealt with that, that I went through counseling, I started, you know, connecting with um, a priest and things like that. The moment that I dealt with that part, everything else fell in line. I stopped, you know, being so promiscuous. I stopped being, you know, having that, you know, uh, free access and everything else. But it started with me getting back centered. So, but, but I t I'm, I'm telling you, you know, when I was, you know, when I was in high school, I was a beast. And, you know, I'm glad I got my, you know, because I believe that everybody goes through a whole phase. Everybody goes through their little promiscuous whole phase. I'm glad mine was very early. I'm glad that mine was in high school and it wasn't, you know, in adulthood. Because in adulthood, I just, man, I'm glad it was just when I was in high school. But I did a lot. Shit, I remember in uh, high school, I was jumping on the, the, the sex party lines. I had all the little different dating apps and stuff like that. When I was in high school, I had a full beard. So a lot of people thought I was older than what I was. And so um, I wasn't even messing with people at the school. I was messing with grown-ass people. <laughs> I was messing around with grown ass people, you know, so I mean, hey, if you're looking at this, just know that, you know, maybe you was a little bit of a pedophile because I was underage. <laughs> but but nah, should I end up uh I end up fucking one of my teachers? <laughs> like like even like these people did not care about age. I can I can promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> they did not. They did not care about age. <laughs> I remember. I remember when I tagged my teacher. Man, ooh, that was. <laughs> but I'm glad. I'm glad that I grew from it. I'm glad that I grew from it, man. When I when I think about when I think about where I started to where I am now, man, it's 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 complete night and day. It's, it's complete night and day. And that's, that's how it's supposed to be. It, we, we're supposed to, you know, transform. We're supposed to ascend. You know, now since I'm in my 30s, now I'm 36, getting ready to turn 37 on June 17th. You know, I, I better not be in that same mentality of that, you know, um, of that, you know, 12-year-old me. Because, shit, I start, I start having sex, um... My seventh grade year, I just I just graduated, just graduated sixth grade. I, I literally just got graduated sixth grade. And then once I graduated, I ended up going to the community center, fucking somebody in the bathroom. Like that's that was that was my virginity taken. That was my first time in the bathroom. <laughs> Man, it's like. The things, the things we do when we young. <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad 
that, you know, I end up getting that reality check and, you know, I, I, I slowed my shit down. Like, you know, and I'm, I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed that, you know, I can say that, you know, I don't have any STDs, no HIV, especially with the shit that I was doing. Like you, you can tell that I was covered. You can tell that I was covered the entire time. Cause I'm like, man, when I was going through my shit, it, like you know, that that was my drug my drug was sex you know i didn't i never never drunk i was one drinking at the time never drunk but i shoes i didn't start drinking until i was like 25 28 somewhere around there and even then you know i never got drunk never been drunk before you know um i might have a glass of wine and then call it a quits but i, I didn't drink at the time i never smoked you know so you know, my, my only outlet, the way that I would get rid of, you know, the way that I would, you know, help myself to heal, to deal with all the trauma and stuff I was going through, you know, my thing was sex, you know, that was the, that was the vice for me, you know, but I'm glad that I think, you know, I'm glad that I think differently now, you know, cause you know, the older you get, the more consequences you get with this stuff. You know, I'm, I'm glad that I, you know, that I was able to go through my breakdowns and stuff like that when I was younger and that I don't have to worry about that shit now. You know, now I'm a whole lot more disciplined. You know, you just, I'm just not, I'm not that easy now. <laughs> now, I'm not that easy now. <laughs> Boy, back then, all you had to do was tell me hi and I'll be like, I'm right there. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> um, how did your religion impact you? Like that? You know, well, th that was the thing. That was part of the thing too. Is that you know, um, is when when you tell a kid at a very young age that they're an abomination, that God don't like them because they're gay and stuff like that. The moment you get that mindset that God don't fuck with you. And then especially when you give that personality back, you don't fuck with me, so I'm not gonna fuck with you either. You tend to do the craziest things under the sun. And that's one of the reasons why, like how we have to stop judging each other, we gotta stop judging each other, trying to put somebody in hell and trying to speak for God. Like, shut the fuck up. You cannot speak for God. God will speak for himself. And so there was always a battle and a conflict where I knew exactly what it was that I wanted and what it was that I liked. You know, I was the type of person that I never faked the funk. You know, I was never the type of person to try to hide and get a girlfriend or something like that. I, I knew I didn't like females, you know, and I think that, you know, my dad used to my dad used to hate that. Because my dad used to always nudge me and be like, you know, oh, don't you want to talk to her? You know, don't you want to? And I'm like, nope, nope. I used shit, I used to get whoopings. <laughs> like, um, but I'm like, no. I, I used to always be, I'm like, nope, that's not what I like. That's not what I wanted. You know, um, and then especially growing up in a time where, you know, being gay still wasn't accepted. You know, so, you know, uh, even at school and stuff like that, there was challenges. You know, so... It, it was crazy, but that was one of the biggest conflicts. You know, um, religion is what created my conflict. I never seen anything wrong with me until people introduced me to Christianity and wanted me to feel that something was wrong with me. That started the um, that started the dilemma. That is the thing that started the fight. That is what started all of the trauma. You know, even when it comes to you know, like uh, my parents and stuff like that, the way that they would, the way that they would treat me and go about things, it was based out of religion, not out of their own mind. And so my trauma and dilemmas, it came from religion. And so it was one of those things that was really hard because I loved religion. You know, um, I was the kid that I read the Bible every single year from beginning to end. That's the one, that's one of the reasons why I know the Bible so well now, you know? And so when I, when I graduated high school, you know, I had this big major breakdown that I'm just praying to God and stuff like that. And I'm like, God, I really want to be connected to you. 
I really just want to be with you. I really love you, God. <laughs> Slobbing and everything. I don't want to be this mistake. I don't want to be this abomination. And I'm like, God, if this is your will, if your will is for me not to be gay, I was like, I want you to take it away from me. And so for the whole two years, and I believe it was two years and a half, I went the entire two years, no sex, no jacking off, no pornos, no nothing. I would not hang around gay guys. I would not hang around men. I would not do anything. Now, at the same time, I still wasn't fucking no bitch because it wasn't just in me. <laughs> it just wasn't in me. And so I went this whole two years and a half just punishing myself, making me suffer. And finally, it was in the midst of this that in order for God to save me, he ended up introducing me to a completely different religion that I knew nothing about. Never knew it, never heard of Ifa, never heard of the Orishas, never heard of the ancestors up until this point. And that was my saving grace. And at the time, I didn't even know half of the things that I, um, that I know now. Like, I didn't know that there were actually Orishas in gay relationships. Olakun and Oko was together, the god of agriculture, and Olakun, the god of the sea. Full-blown gay relationship. Never knew that until later in life. But that two and a half years, it taught me a lot. And I told myself when I left it, it's never again will I allow anybody to have that power over me. Never again will I relinquish my power and give it to somebody else. Nobody will never again tell me that they're going to put me in hell. That I'm, a, I'm an abomination and all of this other shit. That's when, you know, I learned how to start using my throat chakra. And now I can say, bitch, if you don't shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's what that throat chakra for. Now it just comes out. <laughs> because now that there's a difference. In the beginning, I had no worth. I didn't know my worth. I didn't even like myself. And so it was easy for you to attack me. It was easy for you to be um, build me down. Because what you said is what I already felt. You say that I'm not shit. I already feel that I'm not shit. Even when you look at the things that I did in high school, I used to always notice how I shared this before. I used to hate seeing people be bullied. And when somebody was bullied at the school, I would jump into fights, fighting for strangers, people I don't even know. But I did this for so many people, but would never fight for myself. Soon as somebody called me a name, I wouldn't say nothing. I'll put my head down. Soon as somebody, you know, try to push me or anything like that, I'm just like, I don't want no beef. And I'm just sitting in the chair. And it's because I had no, no worth. Never loved myself. Never seen myself in a positive light. Never seen myself as worthy of living. But the moment that they did that to my brother or my sister or one of my friends or even a fucking stranger that I don't know. Now all of a sudden I'm getting up like, bitch, why the fuck you touch him? Now all of a sudden I'm fine. Now all of a sudden I'm defending somebody. But I would defend so many people but never defended myself. That's a sign of low self-esteem. That's a sign of not knowing your worth. And all of that, it came from the church. Years of being in the church, the church taught me, conditioned me, and programmed me not to love myself. The church, every single Sunday, you walk wrong and God hates you. 
You talk wrong and God hates you. You do this and God hates you. Every single Sunday, giving me this narrow perception of who God is. That the only thing that I ever learned was the wrath of God, was the hatred of God, was the biases of God. That's all that was reflected in the church. And God had to completely take me out of it in order for me to understand my worth. How have the Orishas uh, impacted me since the church? Uh, baby, better than better than the saints. <laughs> You know, the very first Orisha that I went to was Oshun. And, and Obatala. Obatala, because I, I, I thought for years that Obatala was my head Orisha. But I remember I was so hurt. And I remember just crying out to Oshun. Tears running down my face and everything. And I'm just like, oh, shoot. You know, I'm like, you know, oh, I'm not beautiful. You know, I'm not, you know, you know, I'm not nothing, you know. And I was just, you know, crying and crying. And, you know, I was like, you know, oh, I don't have a good relationship with my dad. I don't have a good relationship. You know, um, I have a good relationship with my mom. But I'm like, you know, you know, the moment they realize that I'm gay, it's going to be over with. I'm going to lose everything. It was a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress. And it's like Oshun just took me in and wiped all of that away. And I can tell you now, a lot of the things was just like, in my eyes, it's magic that I never seen coming. My dad was the type of person that he hated fucking gays. He is, is rooted in his religion. And my dad used to scare me so much when I was younger that I would purposely never bring anyone home or anything like that because my dad was the type of person that he would have shot the guy and then he would have shot my ass too. And we both would have been dead on the news and he would have been in prison. And ever since I started working with the Orishas, it's like, I don't know what the fuck Oshun did. Oshun took her waters and just cleansed him or something. Because my dad is a completely different person now. We still view things differently. Because the Orishas are not in the business of manipulating someone. We still view things differently. But now my dad, we have a relationship where we can agree to disagree. That we have never had before. It was always his way or the highway. And my relationship with my siblings and things is completely different ever since I start working with the Orishas. The jobs I attract, completely different now since I've been working with the Orishas. There's just a, it's just a complete change. I mean, you know, I remember my twin brother telling me, he was like, dude, I don't know what you are doing. But whatever it is you're doing, you need to keep doing it because he was like, dude, the, the opportunities and stuff that you have now and stuff like that. He was like, dude, I can tell it's something. And I was like, yeah, you know, I switched religions. <laughs> I was like, shit, ever since I switched religions, it was it was night and day. It was no longer begging and prayers. And it was saying, this is what I need. Ancestors, I need you to help me. I need you to respond. You know, it's just a, it's a complete difference. Religion and spirituality, they cannot compare. So, you know, it's, it's a lot. You know, it's a lot that I have to learn. And, you know, um, now since I'm at a state that I'm healed, you know, um, I don't I don't do the things that I used to do anymore. You know, uh, boy, when I was... <laughs> Like I said, in high school, I was a beast. I, I, didn't, I had the, the nastiest, dirtiest dick. I didn't, boy, I put that dick in everything. <laughs> and it was because that was, that was my coping mechanism. That's what I used to cope. But now it's completely different. You know, now it's, it's, it's completely different. Because now, now I believe in soul ties and stuff like that that I got to be careful. <laughs> Can't be doing that nasty ass shit now. <laughs> Get caught up real quick. They like, come over side, give it to me. 
take that nut, put it in the uh, sweet jar. Next thing you know, I'm head over heels in love with somebody and I'm trying to understand why. They done took my essence, using it in the ritual. <laughs> Gotta be careful, boy. You know, that's the one thing. And, th and I think that's the difference between the two. You know, is that religion teach you, oh, if you have sex with people before marriage, you're going to hell. And it's like, okay, that's kind of harsh. You know, and, you know, people rebel when you come that strong. But in spirituality, it's not taught that don't have sex because you're going to hell. It's saying that when you have sex, you better be extremely careful because somebody can take your essence and you can fall head over heels in love. That person can take your essence and do a lot of stuff. They can do all types of spell work on you. And so now you're careful with how you go about things. And it's like now you're making decisions not based off of fear, but you're making decisions based off the wisdom and knowledge that you have obtained. Big difference between religion and spirituality. Religion is fear-based. Do what I say because if not, you're getting the wrath of God and you're going to hell. Spirituality is... You need to do it this way because these are the consequences if you choose to do it the other way. Complete difference between the two. One is all about fear base. The other one is giving you your freedom and your free will. But, but yeah, I, I hey. Uh, we can do another live. I can tell you all about. I I, I went through a lot. It, it, there was the times I I didn't love my body. I was throwing up my food because somebody told me I was fat. And y'all, I was six feet one forty. Imagine that. I was six feet one forty. But because I was told that I was ugly and fat, I was throwing up my food for weeks, throwing my shit up, being anorexic for what? Like, it, man, it, it's, it's so much stuff that I went through as a kid that I have learned the power of my mind and how I would never give it to anybody else. I would never give my mind to anybody else. I will never give my power to anybody else. Oh, that's a troll. I don't, I don't message anybody. I don't message anybody for readings. If somebody is messaging you for a reading, that's a fake profile. Got to be a fake profile because I'm on live. <laughs> so, so that's a fake profile. I'm here. I can't be two places. So, yep. Yeah, but that's, yeah, that's a thing. I, I've, I've been meaning to put a post out about that because a lot of people have been reaching out to me saying, is that you? And it's like, no, if you got to come back to my account and ask if it's me, then no, you should know that it's not me. You know, they're very creative. They're, they're using, you know, some of my pictures and videos. And if you look at it, it's a little off. Like they might have uh, Rashad King 2017, but when you look at Rashad, they spell it with two A's. They'll do like R-A-A-S-H-A-D. You know, so uh, it, they normally make it look very close where if you look at it first glance, you'll think that it's me. But it's like, you know, no, that's that's not me. OK, good. I'm glad you didn't fall for it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, because yeah, because some people did. And I'm like, you know, no, that's not me. But um. But I'll, I'll do a live on that. I'll do a live on talking about healing because yeah, my, my journey wasn't easy. Like, you know, people look at where I am now and it's just like, man, you know, how do I get there? How do I get to know the ancestors and the Orishas? Yeah, mine was a lot of testing, a lot of trials, a lot of error. You know, like if, if, if people just know half of the things that I went through, Man, I went through so much shit when I was younger that I just did not have any self-worth. I did not know myself at all. I hated myself. I didn't even want to I didn't even want to be here. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, in the beginning the, the beginning life it, it wasn't easy for me. You know, um elementary wasn't easy. High school wasn't easy. You know, and eventually I just got to that point that you know, I just glued myself to religion and that was the thing that saved me. But, um...
Man, you'll be surprised. Like a lot of people didn't know. A lot of people, you know, people would look at my, you know, shape now and like, oh, you, you're always in the gym. And it's like, yeah, I do it now because this is something I love. But there was a period in my life where I said, like I said, I had a whole eating disorder. I'm throwing up my food, you know. So it's it's crazy, you know. And but that's, you know, that's the thing about it. When you give somebody permission to get in your mind, when you give somebody permission and you purposely give up your power, I will never make that mistake again. I don't care who it is. I will not give my power up to nobody. Oh yeah, shoes. I'm glad I got through it too because, man, I'm telling you now. Ooh, no telling where I'll be. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> um, yeah, you can always change the future. You know, I tell people all the time, your reading today can be the, a completely different reading tomorrow because of a simple choice that you made. That's why I don't consider bad readings to be bad readings. Because even bad readings where it tells you that, you know, like, oh, this is about to happen in the future. If you don't like it, change it. Make a conscious decision to do something different in the present. And then your future is automatically going to be changed. It is very rare that something is set in stone. If a destiny card is out on the deck, there are certain things that's going to be set in stone no matter what you do. But for the most part, there's always time for you to change. So... But y'all, y'all, hey, this was a good reading. I mean, or this was a good live. Um, all right, y'all, yeah, because I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get up off here myself. So I hope everybody have a blessed day. I'm gonna, uh, if you want to re-listen to this, I'm gonna end up putting it on my YouTube channel. And uh, just remember, man, on Sundays, take the time to honor and acknowledge the um, ancestors and the Orishas. It it doesn't take long at all. Um, advice for people new learning about their reaches, get my books. Go to my website, go to my bio, uh, click the, um, the Stan Store. It should be Stan Store, Rashad King 2017. Go on my website and order the books. Order those books so that you can start learning about the Orishas. You know, and so then when I ask questions on here, you will know the answer. Because <laughs> I'm always asking questions on here. You know, and, you know, so that's what's going to help you out, you know, um, more than anything. So, you know, read, read those uh, stories. We'll, we'll start, we'll, we'll end, we'll end with a question now since, you know, somebody brought that up. You know, um, Ogun, oh, there's a painted key that Ogun was mad at civilization and Ogun started to kill civilization because Ogun is a very powerful Orisha. Ogun is over everything on top of the road, airplanes, railroads, transportation, civilization, technology, <laughs> and he's the god of war. <laughs> so Ogun is a very powerful deity. It said that as Ogun was going back into the forest, civilization was falling apart because if Ogun wasn't a part of civilization, it was going to break and it was going to crack. It was going to fall. And Ogun carried himself deep into the forest, hiding from civilization and civilization was breaking apart. All of the Orishas tried to come in and fix things, but nobody could fix it. The only person that could fix it was um, Ogun. What other Orisha is in this painted key that went into the forest and lured Ogun back out so that civilization can once again be saved? What Orisha was present in that painted key? What Orisha lured Ogun back out of the forest and allowed civilization to be saved? Elijah, I know you know the answer. I'm, I'm trying to get one of them to give me the answer. I know you know the answer. Because that's, that's one of the painted keys you remember. Anyone know what Orisha lured Ogun out of the forest to save civilization? 
Ba, ba, ba. If nobody get it right, Elijah, I'll let you come and tell it. Because I haven't got any answers yet. Uh, well, somebody got it on the first, the first, the first try. They already got it, so you look like you can't tell it. <laughs> it was Oshun. It was Oshun. So, yep, Oshun was the Orisha. Boy, it said that Oshun went in that forest. Oshun found her a little river, lake, or pond, and they said Oshun just got in that river and start bathing herself. And Ogun was just watching her. Ogun was like, and Oshun, don't mind me while I wipe myself clean. <laughs> and it said that Oshun was just bathing in that river, boy. She had to get her hair. Ugh. <laughs> and Ogun just watch it. And as Oshun was just walking out, Ogun was so captivated by her beauty captivated by her essence that he just followed followed Oshun he oh I wish I could get me some of that sweet thing and that was the thing that saved civilization that the moment that Ogun was out of the forest and he was once again back in civilization people were able to re, uh, rebuild and restore and so very powerful painter keys these painter keys can teach you a lot about the Orishas and it teaches you a lot about their dominion. You know, in that paint a key, you automatically learn that Ogun is over civilization as well as the forest. You understand the important role of Ogun. And you also understand the power of Oshun. Oshun is a very strong, seductive energy. It said that Oshun is so beautiful that Oshun can make any male burst. Just as soon as Oshun is around, you nut everywhere. <laughs> that is the power of Oshun. That is said that Oshun can, any man, any man Oshun go by, they boom. That she can please any man. Oshun is very beautiful. I love Oshun. Oshun is really good, beautiful energy. You know, um, and so Oshun is a very powerful deity. Like, you know, um, that's definitely one of the Orishas that I think that you all should learn about. You should all learn about Oshun. Oshun is very powerful in this religion. Very powerful deity. But all right, Elijah has starved long enough. Let me uh, go ahead and uh, let him eat. So uh, I'll talk to y'all later. Check out my website. Go to my bio. Click on um, the links. And then go to the stand store, the Rashad King 2017, and order your books. The books are just $20. Order your books. Uh, order the book about the Paint of Keys, telling about the Orishas, and learning how to pray in the religion. No, 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 no. no not, not really. Because uh, yeah, no, Oshun is very powerful when it comes to magic. But no. There is one deity that is the witches of all witches. No, who is that? What Orisha is that? Now, since we got on this topic, it is one Orisha. And uh, this Orisha is so powerful that she is called the three crowned deity. That there is a paint to key that Ola Dumare gave her a crown over the earth. A crown over the um, a crown over the earth, a crown over the waters, and a crown over what was the third crown? It's crown over the earth, crown over the water, because it's, it's crown over the sea, crown over the earth, and what was the third crown? Dang, now I gotta. What was the third crown? It's crown over the earth, crown over the water, and it was something else. It's like, I think it's, it was it crown over magic? No, crown over the moon. That's what it is. Ah, crown over the moon. That's what it is. I knew it was going to come back. So this deity is so powerful that Ola Dumare, um gave this person three crowns. Crowns over the earth, crown over the sea and crown over the moon that the moon 
is this deity's um, dominion. And the moon, if you know, is one of the greatest sources for witchcraft. People do so much witchcraft at nighttime when the moon come out, following the moon cycles and stuff like that. This deity is the witches of all witches. What deity is that? It's not Oba. Oba is known for her, um, her for her dedication and loyalty. And Oba is a water deity, so she's over the rivers. She's over the rivers while Oshun is over the river lakes and ponds. So what deity received three crowns? Uh-oh, Elijah, you want to give it a guess? Come on, you can... I know it's right there. Okay, just come on. Go ahead and give it a guess. You can you can give it a guess in front of the people. Let the people know what you think it is. So what deity? What deity received the three crowns? Go ahead, Elijah. What do you think? I think it's either uh, Oya or Yemiya. Okay, but it's it's only one or the other. You can only um you can only choose one. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember. Because you told me you told me that paints a key. So what deity what deity is the three crowned deity that this is the deity that is over witchcraft? That if you want to know anything about witchcraft, this is the deity you need to petition. This is the deity you need to call upon. Now, Oshun is really good when it comes to magic, but it's not Oshun. And I think it's easy for people to assume Oya because Oya is the Orisha over the dead, but it's not Oya. And it's Yemaya. It's Yemaya. Yemaya is the three queen deity. And there was a whole painted key. Now, I, I got to go because I got to eat. Y'all, this is a whole painted key. Now, I, I guess I'll tell you, I'll hurry up and rush this painted key. So, Oladumare, which is God of the Earth. Ola Dumare was getting ready to give the Orishas more power because he was getting ready to leave the earth and wanted to do things more in the universe. And so Ola Dumare was saying that before I can go out in the universe to the other planets and everything, I got to make sure that they are right here on this earth with the humans. And so... Ola Dumare created this big feast and invited all of the Orishas. Everybody came. Ilegwa, Eshu, Ogun, Ochosi, Oya, uh, Chango, Oshun, Olakun, Oba. You know, um, all of the Orishas was present. And so they were all there at the table, but Yemaya wasn't there. And so everybody, Oladumare was like, nobody can eat until Yemaya comes first because he wanted everybody to eat together as a family. And then after he was going to bestow upon them powers. And so everybody, you know, hours went by. Yemaya still haven't made it. And so. Finally, everybody, you know, everybody was telling Oladumare, like, look, I don't know if she got the invitation or what, but can we eat? <laughs> and so eventually Oladumare said, yes, you all can eat. So finally, Yemaya came in after everybody got done eating. And Yemaya came in with this beautiful, gorgeous gift. That she presented to Oladumare. Keep in mind, no other Orisha brought an offering to Oladumare. They only came to eat and to receive their gift. Yemaya came in. It said that she was covered in the sea. Her gown was nothing but water. It was nothing but her elements. With grace, she walked right up to Oladumare and handed Oladumare such a beautiful gift. 
and was the only one that presented Oladumare with a gift. And Oladumare told her to sit down and to go ahead and eat because he had already given the other ones, the, the other ones have already ate. It was nothing for, um, Ola, um, for Yemaya to eat. Everybody ate all of the food, didn't leave anything for Yemaya. Oladumare said something about it. Oladumare said, so you couldn't wait for her to eat. You didn't save her anything to eat. And she is the only one that did not rush here to this meeting because she wanted to present me with a gift. And it was because of that that Oladumare said, you will now be the queen of three crowns. That not only will you be over the sea anymore, but you will be over all bodies of water. That the sea is yours, the lakes is yours, the ponds is yours, which is now, which is Oshun dominion, but Yemaya is now placed over every body of water, including the womb, including your blood that flows through your vein. It's all dominions of Yemaya. And he said that not only will I give you the sea and all bodies of water, but I will also give you the earth. And I will also give you the moon. And so Yemaya is a very powerful deity. Having dominion over the earth, the waters, as well as the moon. She is the true witch. <laughs> you want to know any spell, anything that will break or curse somebody? Yemaya is the one that knows all the secrets. Um, yeah, uh, Ola Kuhn is the male version of, um, it, well, I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I guess you can say it like that. Well, that's a different painter key. Techni technically, Ola Kuhn was present first, and it said that Ola Kuhn ripped himself into two parts, and that's what created Yemaya. And Yemaya serves at the top of the sea, and he's the bottom of the sea. But completely different painter key. I'll tell you that painter key on another day. Uh, so, so, yep. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, you know, yeah, this is, this is how you learn about Orisha is through the painter keys. The painter keys is like the parables in the Bible. These are the stories. The Bible in Ifa is called the Odu Ifa. And so that's how you learn about Orisha. You learn about Orisha by learning the painter keys and learning the Odu Ifa. You know, if you want to learn more about the Orishas and you want to learn more about these stories, then go in my bio, click on my links, and go to the stand store, Rashad King 2017, so that you can order the two ebooks that I created, so that you can learn about the Orishas. There is so much beauty in this religion when you learn the Orishas. Don't allow this to be like Christianity, that you allow somebody else to teach it to you, and now you're learning it based on their perception. No, just read it yourself that you can draw your own conclusions based on the spirit, the ashe that is inside of you. It will allow you to see what needs to be seen. So let's study. Let's study to show ourselves approved. There's so many painted keys, and every last one of the stories are just so beautiful in nature. Let's go ahead and do our due diligence and do the work. All right, y'all, I'm about to go so this boy can eat. Oh yeah, I mean, it, all of them are. All of them are at the end of the day. All of the branches are tied. You know, all of them are tied together. They believe in. You know, they try to separate themselves, but at the end of the day, it's still the same core thing. So. Let's do our um, let's do our work. Let's do our homework and learn about the Orishas. Go to my website, order your books, and let's learn about the Orishas so that when I ask you questions, you will know the answer. <laughs> um, yeah, you can. The best way to message me is on Instagram, Rashad King two thousand seventeen. If you're looking for a reading, you would also go to my website. Um, which is in my bio so that you can sign up for a reading as well. All my readings is now done through my website. All right, y'all, I'm about to go. Make sure you follow me on uh, YouTube as well. I'm going to post some more uh, channel messages pretty soon. 
Uh, normally, it's not a set time. Honestly, it's really when when Spirit give me a message, and you know, he want, if Spirit is like, "Hey, I need you to teach the people this." That's when I'll jump here on live, and I'll do a live, and I'll teach the message. You know, um, it's it's really not. Is you know me going on live is not it's it's not me driven it's spirit driven. Whenever spirit give me a message to tell the mass, that's when I'll jump on air and I'll tell. All right, y'all, I'm out.